Welcome to Painter 2015. When you launch the program, you'll be greeted with a welcome screen that has three sections. Inspire section is simply a slideshow that you can scroll through using these double-headed arrows at the bottom. You'll see different kinds of artwork by different painter masters, a variety of techniques and styles and subject matter. The Create section will give you an opportunity to see what's new in Painter. You can create a new image, open an existing image. Down here, you can choose your custom workspace so that the desktop suits the way you want to work. And what I'd like to show you now is brush tracking. This is a way that you can customize your Wacom tablet to your particular touch how fast you like to work, and the pressure that you normally apply when you work. Draw a brush stroke that's typical for the way you draw. You'll find that the curve over here on the right will accommodate to your stroke. If I have a very light touch, for example, that's the result. If I work very fast, then this happens. Here's a typical brush stroke for me. It's kind of fast and heavy pressure. So I'm happy with that, and I'm going to click OK. Painter will remember that when I launch the program again. You can also change it if you wish to work in a different style. Let's open a new canvas. So we'll go to File, New, Width and Height, 900 pixels wide and 600 high. That's not the default. It's something that I've already used before. You don't have to use pixels. Here are other choices for units. You can choose a different color than white for your paper. If you tap on that swatch, you'll find that you can go around this color wheel and you can make things lighter and darker. I will cancel that because white is just fine. I can also choose a different paper texture from among these items in my paper library, but once again, I'll accept the default. I am given the opportunity to work with this nice, fresh white canvas. The core of painter is the brushes. Brushes is a term used by painter in a generic way to refer to any of the mark making tools. They are arranged in categories here on the left, acrylics, charcoal, Conti, felt pens, and so on. When you choose a category, and I'll choose chalk, as you scroll or hover over each of the specific items in the right-hand side of this panel. These are the variants, the very specific chalks in this case, which are going to behave in a different way or be a different size or shape. Notice at the bottom you'll see a stroke preview and to the left of that a dab preview or the footprint of the brush. I'll choose Square chalk 35. 35 refers to the pixel size of the brush. So with square chalk as my chosen brush, I will make a mark. I think I'll go over to my color picker and make that a darker blue. This way I can see more clearly the paper texture. As we expect, chalk will reveal paper texture. Let's find another kind of mark making tool. Crayon, and in this case, also noticing the stroke preview, I'll choose a grainy hard crayon here. And when I choose a different color, such as this pink, I will find that I am in fact seeing paper grain once again. I'm also getting very dark strokes as I go over and over. That is typical of the build up kind of method for crayons in the real world. Let's try a pen. If we go down here alphabetically, we'll see pens, and I will choose flat color and maybe another color over here. With flat color, I'm not getting any paper grain, and we expect that behavior from pens. That's kind of a fat pen. A leaky pen, and when I use the leaky pen, I'm going to be getting lots of little spots. Pencils will provide us with another interesting grouping. We'll go to pencils and find that there are quite a large number of variants here. If I take sketching pencil five and go to yet another color, I can make a stroke that will vary based on pressure. It will vary in terms of its opacity. 
Some of the tools will vary in opacity. Some will vary in size. Let's find one that's going to vary in size. I know there's one in the pens group called the scratchboard tool. And if I have light pressure, I get a thin line. Heavier pressure gives me a fatter line. I invite you to experiment by simply finding a variety of categories and variants and making some marks on a blank canvas. In the next movie, we will explore more of these brushes and look at ways that we can organize them and manage them.